Hi, my name is Jules, and I have a deep passion for working at connecting people to their own inner wisdom. And I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Uh, my mom was a physiotherapist, and she would take cranial sacral therapy courses and come back and teach me the techniques and listening through my fingers. And so I've been doing it for a really long time. And what I really love is working with kids because kids are phenomenal in not needing to make sense of things. They don't have to put things in boxes and categorize things. They just acknowledge them as they show up and they roll with it. And so as I continued throughout my life and eventually became a massage therapist uh, doing cranial sacral therapy, my great passion is working with kids and that included babies and toddlers and kids, but also the inner child within all of us, because we all have that recognition where we got frozen at a place in time and, and or stuck. For me, it was my 12 year old self. And uh, the first inner child journey that I went on was going back in time to my 12 year old who was super excited about uh, doing karaoke at a bar after a soccer game because we never went to bars and I, it was really exciting that they had karaoke. And so I said to my mom, like, can I do karaoke? And she could tell my excitement was there and she was a great mom. And she said, yeah, of course, Jules, if you want to do it, you go for it. Uh, not realizing that it was really challenging for her. She was trying to be, be generous for me. But when I got on stage and started singing, my sister and my mom had disappeared. They were, they were nowhere to be seen. It turns out they were so embarrassed for me that they had gone to hide in the bathroom, <laughs> afraid that I was gonna pull them on stage with me or something, I'm not sure exactly. But for me up on stage, I had been encouraged to do that thing that I really loved and my support was gone. And something for me got frozen in that space, thinking I wasn't loved, I wasn't seen, all of the pieces that, that we pull into, uh, that later on I was able to go back and reintegrate and befriend and join in an entirely different way. And so I love to help people access those within themselves. And I bring to this beautiful team the option of connecting to it in your body. I find that, that that is the missing link is we often think something and we know something with our head and we rationalize it and we recognize it over and over and over again. But it doesn't necessarily uh, allow us to take action until we've embodied it. So what I've been saying lately is that uh, it's like information is readily available and we're, we're drowning in it. But unless we take that information and we use that fuel, uh, it, it doesn't help us go anywhere. So it's like putting fuel into the tank of a car that has no engine. There's no potential to get to momentum until it's actually embodied, until the generator, the engine of our body is able to take it and do something with it. And so that is my unique skill set is tuning into the body and recognizing where things are caught within the body and bringing it into connection. And that is very often in connection to parts of our past and or parts of our future and letting them all connect to one another within the embodied experience. So I'm excited to share in this experience with all of you uh, as well as these teachers that we're all impassioned in different ways. So I'm excited that we all can all do this together. And no matter what, of all three of our different techniques of doing it, one of them is gonna hit. And that's most exciting for me. Thanks everybody. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jules. That was amazing. I love that. And Miss Madam Patricia, oh. hear from you. <laughs> Hi everybody. Thank you, Jules. That I was just, I was just like, oh, that little 12-year-old stuck there in that moment for however long it took before we realized or had someone to um, travel with us back 
to find her and bring her back to the the present. And that's what I've been doing as well. I've been doing that for nearly 20 years. Um, I learned my craft in Glastonbury in Avalon in the UK. Back in 2004, I started that journey. And I had the privilege of working with some of the top psychological pioneers, the trailblazers that this planet had to offer. They've, they've left the planet now. They've got work to do on the other side. But um, I learned soul retrieval, if you like, or traveling back forward and throughout the quantum worlds that we live to find the parts of ourselves that have been fragmented off due to peak experiences. And I say peak experiences because it doesn't always have to be traumatic. It can be fun times that it's happened. So surprise birthday parties or being stuck at the top of a roller coaster ride, um, um, things like that can make us literally jump out of our bodies. I was so shocked I jumped out of my body. And so over the years I've helped people locate find and reintegrate with those parts of them their soul the parts that are literally outside of themselves um that may be too that may be in the womb that may be um before this lifetime in different lifetimes they may be 90 years old and the client i'm working with is 30 um as you know time doesn't exist in in that metaphysical landscape but like Jules, you know, we all three of us bring a different, unique way of working. And it won't be just one child that you find. Um, it may be quite a few children that have fragmented off through through peak experiences and remain stuck, numb. Then they could be in hiding. They could be confused. They could be in an environment. They could be not in an environment. They could be in a universe. They could be fragmented off into a carpet. Um, they can be all over the place, um, but they are signaling to you in the only way they know how um, through those ways, those coping strategies that they used at the time of fragmentation. So it might be through not being able to speak out. It might be through confusion. It might be through lacking in boundaries. Um, they're very um, essence vibrates at a particular frequency and so that will vibrate out and attract the very perfect person to trigger them into being and then nearly 50 I might play out a 14 year old who's in sabotage mode um, but over the years I've come to realize that they are signaling to us in the only way they know how we've just not been taught to listen and know that that is who's knocking at our door um, and so that's, I suppose, that's what this group is about. It's about um, tooling ourselves up with the language and the awareness it is to know when we are um, triggered and we're, we're behaving from a place of fragmentation, a place um, that isn't our sovereign self. And how then to create a pathway to that part and then start that communication with them. Um, because they might not want to give up their role so easily. They've been working maybe for 50 years protecting you in the only way they know how. And so they may not be willing yet to just give up their role that easily. You know, they might want you, they might want to hang about for a little bit and see that you're trustworthy enough. Um, but the, invariably inside that soul, inside that being, they have a wealth of resources that you haven't been able to connect with. They have a wealth of resources such as confidence and love and freedom and that sense of self, that childlike sense of self that they've been looking after and protecting all those years. And so through you know, our, our, our way of being with that child in that moment, we can help you navigate that and communicate with them so that they build, you build a trust with them. And then invariably they will want to come home to you. They'll want to mature up from the age of two or four or 18. They'll want to mature up to now and, and be part of you and integrate with every cell of your being. And when that happens, when that happens, we then, all of that past outdated mode of behavior dissolves. That's when we truly release ourselves and we can stand within our own sense of self and be that sovereign being 
that isn't easily led, that doesn't have to play it small and contort, that knows what's right and what's wrong for us, that's in, aligned and can trust your intuition and walk and talk from that space. That's, that's as far as I'm concerned, for the last 20 years, it's only then that that can happen and it doesn't bounce back and become past programming. So we are embarking on a, on a, on a, on a journey that's very, very powerful, very unique and very special. We're going to bond on levels that potentially we've never experienced to that depth before. And we will be meeting our, our inner children. And, they, and it may not all be rosy and nice. There will be tears, bring your tissues. But above all, there'll be connection. And it's a container that will be held and supported and loved. And then we just bring ourselves back to wholeness. And we've had, I've, I've been doing this for nearly 20 years, Jules, probably, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you've got a wealth of experience here. Plus you have your own toolboxes that you're bringing to this table as well. I'm, I'm, the thrill bumps are coursing through me at what we're about to do. Because as far as I'm concerned, when I was given this mission back in 1999, this was, my mission was to help facilitate the integration of all fragmentation that has gone on on this planet. That's a massive bloody mission. And it all starts within. And it's not just this lifetime, it's all the lifetimes that we've lived. Because when we, when we reintegrate with the parts of ourselves now, we make changes, not just to the ripple effect in our ancestral line, but also for our children, our great, our grandchildren and the children that come. We really are the ones that make the change right now this is what this group is about and then it will exponentially grow so this, the tools that you learn to fill your own toolbox you'll go out and share it with others as well and that will exponentially grow the awakening the great awakening that we're, we're having on this planet we are this is how we create the new earth that we've come to right now this incarnation right now this is an extraordinarily powerful and pokey time but this is the work that needs to have happen and i for one am truly grateful to be part of it and i thank you for joining us on this mission awesome thank you so much trisha i never get tired of listening to you oh. <laughs> so there is some you know i'm aisha hogan i'm also the founder and the visionary of i awesome and when i say visionary i awesome showed up for me as a vision it was right at the beginning of covid and i was in the middle of a meditation when this showed up not like this um it did show up where i was on a field and i was there and there was hundreds and thousands of people in front of me everybody dressed in these white outfits and everybody on yellow yoga mats and i saw this beautiful academy over to the right and there was just this amazing energy pulping off it it was just pulsing like a heartbeat and i could feel the love from it and I know then I'm kind of just sort of summarizing it for you, but I, I knew then I had to do something to be bringing teachers together. I didn't know what it was going to look like. At first, I actually thought it was going to be brick and mortar. I had no idea that we were going to be doing it like this. Um, but as I kept asking the universe, how do you want me to do this? The pieces started to show up for me very quickly. And the reason I'm telling you this is because uh, Patricia and I do a lot of similar work. However, I just do it a little bit differently. I am a soul traveler. So I do take people through different times and dimensions and I help them clear blockages and, and do bring back not only their inner children and deal with them, but also the, the um, sub personalities, the other parts of them that they have that they dismissed for one reason or another and to bring them back to make you whole again. And my vision is to really bring it back to in this world, this quantum leap that we're doing here right now, that we're in the middle of, it's a huge evolutionary leap that we're in right now, is that it's going to, to really bring humanity into a collaboration, into a unity. But I see it one step further, and that is really bringing all of your lifelines into a collaborative unity as well. Because when we think about going back into other lives, we do focus a lot on the trauma um, that happened there. And even as in my own training, it was always go after the trauma. But if you think about the life that you're leaving, living right now, well, our whole lives are not full of trauma. There's a lot of resources that we've built. There's a lot of skills that we've learned. 
And we did the same thing in other lives. So if we can go and get those amazing gems of wisdom and bring them into some kind of cohesion, a soul cohesion, that will make all of not just us as humanity stand together and united, but also in each of our soul collectives as well. So as I was building I Awesome, uh, let me just tell you a little bit. Um, my name is Aisha. I grew up in a country called Turkey. And you can imagine growing up here, I was beat up pretty much every day. And um, I was not the popular kid in school. My mom sewed my dresses. I didn't wear what everybody else was wearing. Um, I spoke a different language. And even though I spoke English fluently, it didn't matter. And I was the outcast. So it's funny that I had forgotten some of the things that I had gone through as a child during that time. And as I was building I Awesome, this academy where I was kind of, as I was building it, I was the popular girl in school, you know, in the academy. There was a day where I was interviewing faculty and my body completely atrophied in such a way that I couldn't get off my couch. I had gone into the fetal position. I was in incredible pain. I couldn't move. i have gone into the chills. I thought, did I get COVID? Like, I don't understand what's going on with me right now. And fortunately I was able to, I had my phone with me and I called a friend of mine and I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I cannot move my body. Like, I don't know what's wrong. And I'm having incredible chills and I'm hurting everywhere. My body is in incredible pain. And so as we started to talk it out, cause I was fine, you know, an hour earlier. And as we started to talk it out, it was my inner child. She was freaking out because she was reminding me, don't you remember what happened to us in school? When we used to hide, we used to hide, we used to hide in the, in the bathroom cubicles for everybody to leave. So I wouldn't get beaten up. So it was like, can you, do you remember what we went through? And that eight-year-old child showed up and she was terrified, but I was so excited with I awesome. I wasn't paying attention to her and she needed to be heard. So I remember it took us an hour, close to an hour for me to be able to even move my limbs. And once I did, and I was stretching out and I was laying on the couch, I remember my friend asking my inner child because she, take, she took me into a state of hypnosis and asking my inner child, what are you afraid of? And she says that this won't work again, like everything that we've done. And that would like, it, it just came out of me. And she said, well, what will happen if this doesn't work? And my inner child said, oh, sorry, she said, then I'll just die. So that's how scared she was to be going through this. And I really feel for her. And I'm always talking to her. And she's the, probably the most um, hurt child that I have. I have many ch children that have like frozen in time that I've worked with, but I think she was the most damaged. And working with her, um, I've, I'd forgotten. And she just wanted me to hear her. She was screaming inside and I wasn't listening. So that's what she did to me to make me listen. So our inner ch children do need to be heard. They do need our, we would never do it to our own physical children. If they were hurting, we would be there for them. And we need to give them the same love, probably more than we even give our own children and give them everything that they didn't get. And the, the, to be heard, to be understood, to know that it's not their fault if their parents split up. It's not their fault if their parents, if their father was hitting their mother. It's not their fault because kids take it on. You know, they take it on and they say, hey, you know, what, what could I be better? I'll be good. I'll be whatever. Just stop. Right. So doing this work, I think, is powerful for everyone. You can see the effect that it has on me, which I wasn't thinking it was going to do to me just talking about it. But it's, it's, um, it is very necessary not to only connect with your inner child in this life, but to connect to your inner child in many lifetimes because they're all screaming and maybe, or hiding or hurt or need empowerment or whatever it is that they're feeling. But maybe that person that you are in that lifetime isn't awakened, 
doesn't know to do that work, doesn't know that this is something that's, that needs to be done. And, but, but here we are more awake and probably in other lives we're even more awake, but there are lifetimes that we weren't and we need to go and help them because that's going to affect our biology, our illnesses that we might have in other lives. It's going to affect us, not just only on a physical, or sorry, on a mental level, on a spiritual level, but definitely on a physical level as well in our own health. So it's, it's a very important work. Probably I would think almost the most important work to do. And so we're going to be bringing this to you in lots of different ways. And yes, lots of Kleenex, as you can see, you will need some days of a blanket <laughs> to wipe your face. So um, definitely finding, uh, and, and the other thing is that I really want everyone to know is this is a vault. This is another reason why we're not going to be recording. We'll be recording, but we're not posting this. And the, the only reason that we're recording it is so that we can be better in the next version of this group that we put out there. But for, for this one, we're not, we're recording, but we're not posting. So I want you to feel like you can absolutely, this is a sacred safe space. The three women that you have here that are leading this, you couldn't be in better hands. And, you know, we will always hold you right here. So definitely, you know, feel free to share, feel free to be who you are. There is no judgment. Even when you think it's something that you want to share that you've always been judged on, that's not going to happen here, right? So I just want you to feel, feel safe in that way. It's very important for us that you feel very safe in this space because de dealing with your inner child can be a little grueling at times because even as a parent, sometimes we don't know what to do. Right. And here now you have people who can give you options on what to do. Because when that was happening to me, I didn't know what to do in that moment. Even though I helped other people, it was happening to me in that moment. And I was feeling it and I was so absorbed in it that I couldn't bring my own tools out. Right. So it, it sometimes we do need the guidance and the facilitation of other people. Right. So just, you know, as time goes on, you will, will start to build that trust together. Hey, Jules. Hey, I just wanted to mention that this session is being recorded, but the final ones are not, or I should say this one is going to be posted. The, the next ones will not. This yeah. The next ones won't be. Yeah. And that the importance of knowing that this is a safe space is so, so very powerful because as adults, it's hard for us to trust sometimes. As kids, kids are even more uh, sensitive to the intentions and expectations of others. So knowing that this is a safe space, I work with a lot of kids who are um, on the autistic spectrum and they notice your intentions and they can read an expectation within seconds. And so, knowing that this is a space where we are all here to just hold the space without judgment is most important. And I'm speaking to you, but also I'm just speaking directly to your inner child and reiterating exactly what I just said, that we have this expectation in ourselves that we're, we should be able to do it all ourselves. And we created this group specifically because it's impossible to see our own blind spots. And it's impossible to see some of these inner children within us without a clear reflector of someone else or this really powerful catalyst of all of us being here together to hold space. And that's why it's such an important group experience and that's why we made it this. So do lean in, but do also know this is a safe space to lean in and that this you sharing and you opening up into this group and us creating that sacred container together is actually what makes the healing possible. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. So we are gonna be clearing, I'll be with you one sec, Patricia. We are gonna be also clearing a lot of triggers and blocks for you, um, not only for your children, but for you. And, and um, even as, you know, if it becomes like all of a sudden Steph's having a, a you know, I'm just call you Steph, is that okay? <laughs> and, and when she's having a, a moment, 
you know, we might all be saying, okay, this is what we need to do with Steph right now, you know, and we're going to be focusing in on her in that moment. So um, as much as we're going to give you a lot of, of information and we're going to take you through a lot of journeys and a lot of techniques and a lot of things, sometimes they're going to affect you differently. And we may need to focus in on one or two of you right away. And if it's more than one, I might say, Jules, I'm throwing you in with Steph and we're going, in, you guys are going into a breakout room and you need to work with her. Right. So it's, it's going to be where it's going to be, what's going to be exactly what it needs to be in that moment. Sorry, Patricia, what were you going to say? I was just going to add, you know, if you feel unsafe, if you feel that lack of trust, then that is the juice that we need on the table. Um, so feel free to bring it um, and, and voice it and we can work with all of all of that. I mean, that, you know, to, to kind of really engage in the group, if there's something stopping you from engaging in the group from the very beginning, then that's that's probably the first thing we'll work with.